Okay, let's talk about something pretty neat. By the way, I have to mention, and I know some haters out there are going to call this egotistical, but it's nevertheless true. I'm a ham radio operator. I grew up messing with radios, ham radios galore. Um, I've written a couple books on field theory. One of them is insanely popular. I've been studying the great masters of electrical theory, uh, Tesla, Steinmetz, Charles Prody Steinmetz, uh, James Kirk Maxwell, and Oliver Heaviside, and uh, the modern day version, which is uh, Eric Dollard, ex extensively. Now, there are two premises here. Uh, I used to go to ham radio conventions all the time. You talk about people that actually go to um, uh, photography places and they look at new lenses. The exact same thing happened for the exact same reason and for the exact same electromagnetic reasons that, uh, like the hamvention, hamventions were ham radio operators, people that are into uh, electromagnetism. Oh my god, what else is electromagnetism? Uh, I'm pretty sure it might be light. Light might be no different than radio waves, except it is visible radiation. See, down here we have shortwave, TV, AM, FM, radar. Oh, right there in the magical section, by the way, which sits between a ratio of 1 to 5, is visible light. Isn't that cool? Guess what a lens is? is absolutely 100 percent I've got a lot of antennas I've even made a lot of antennas and a lens is no different than an antenna no no different form of electromagnetism has a different type of receptor these are actually metal rods with have a certain uh, attenuation certain uh, directionality this is certainly omnidirectional a Yagi antenna you can actually point a Yagi antenna you could hear where somebody's actually uh, this is how they find you too with cell phones they do something different back in the day they'd actually go around uh, pointing antennas on top of a car and they'd actually triangulate where the hell you were it's the same thing same thing with antennas and same thing with the camera lenses if you think that your camera is any different than this radio or your lens is any different from this antenna then I can assure you 100 percent that you are smoking crack electromagnetism is electromagnetism is electromagnetism I sit at a very unique crossroads lucky for me I don't know anybody else that sits I don't know anybody else that would want to sit there that I know a great deal both about light field theory a tremendous amount about lenses okay I've certainly used and tested more lenses than anybody else. If anybody else thinks that that is some sort of fallacy, I don't care what they think. You know, there's some cockroaches over on a Nikon uh, uh, rumor board uh, talking about that. I don't care. You know, let them make 2,600 videos and recommend lenses and see what their um, what their approval rate is from people that buy those recommended lenses mine no matter how much people love to hate me and I certainly got uh, you make 2600 videos you're gonna make some haters especially with a personality like mine right my approval rate sits right near a hundred percent basically at a hundred percent and countless tens and tens of thousands of lens purchases off my recommendation the people that come back that uh, you know it broken lenses don't count or lenses that are damaged or whatever from eBay obviously that's not my fault but you know I see stuff all over the web it's like I hate that guy but I bought you know several lenses off his recommendations and they're my favorite lenses I have seen that said so many times I hate that guy but I listen to his lens recommendations <laughs> which is good enough you know Making people happy is a good thing. Life is short. You know, if you make somebody happy and save them a certain amount of time, you know, not pissing money away, buying crud lenses that are going to die or croak or render really poorly, that is a really good thing. But the secret is, and I've uh, also been attacked recently by some of these morons. They think that uh, light is like a particle. I, I find it very amusing. Now, uh, Nikola Tesla... James Clerk Maxwell and Oliver Heaviside and Charles Proteus Steinmetz, who gave us 100% of the world's electrical grid, they all had one thing in common. They absolutely scoffed at the idea of a light particle, or das Lichtwand. The notion that everything is uh, some form of uh, miniature golf ball that's bounding through... You know, maybe after a heavy day of shooting with your camera, you should take the lens off and dump all the photons... Uh, out that must be sitting on the top of your sensor. Light is an electrical circuit, okay? It's electrical. Transverse electrical, magnetic, longitudinal compressions and rarefactions of dielectricity, 
what's dielectricity? Did you pull that out of your fanny? No, you know, the guy that has like six uh, page long equations and was like one of the smartest people who ever lived and wrote, you know, more books than you would ever write in like 30 lifetimes? Um, Charles, uh, 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 Charles Proteus Steinmetz? You know, um, yeah, yeah, all of his books are just full of the word dielectricity. People have no idea the difference between dielectricity and electricity. What the hell does this have to do with photography? It means that choosing the right lens is understanding A, the nature of light. All lens design is itself an art form. You can actually plug in these numbers into these, uh, these optical CAD programs that will tell you uh, the refraction, deflection, uh, where you need to place aspherical elements and ED glass, but they won't actually tell you how to design a lens. Now, I have another question for you. If you think that light is actually a particle, or if pe pe I keep... I keep, some people actually get furious the fact that I deny a, f a photon exists. Like, I'm talking about, like, aliens and tinfoil hat stuff. I want to ask people that are that pathetically stupid, who are mental midgets and, uh, you know, intellectually, they're cockroaches. Do these people think that they're smarter than Tesla, Faraday, Steinmetz, and Heaviside, the people that designed the entire uh, world of electricity that we have? I mean, do they think that they're smarter than those guys? I, I would love to hear their theory on that one. I mean, you think that this is my idea? I mean, I've, I've heard this said on so many boards. Oh, that guy, so he denies a photon. I mean, he's talking about crazy stuff. I am? What the hell do you know about electrical theory and light? Really, what the hell do you know? The answer is when confronted, they don't know anything. Nothing. Tesla scoffed vehemently at the idea of a photon particle. The speed of light doesn't even exist. He scoffed at that idea as well. It is a rate of induction. You know, the very fact, and which is a fact, when light passes through a piece of glass like this, or any piece of glass, it slows down. And then it speeds back up. Of course, it's not a speed, it's a rate of induction. The rate of induction through a different medium changes. But ironically, after it leaves, it speeds back up again. Well, that defies the law of conservation of energy. That means that light is not uh, an actual thing. It is a field perturbation. Because the only way that something is self-contained could slow down and speed back up again and not break the conservation of energy law is if it is a field perturbation and a rate of induction rather than a speed. And I would love to hear anybody try to refute that fact. You think that light, or, that pho that light is photon particles? Well, isn't that interesting? Then, you're, then you believe that uh, light breaks, every, as it passes through a lens, it breaks the uh, conservation of energy law. Because when it passes through glass, it slows down by, what, about 17%? And then it speeds back up again? You're back, yeah. Particles slowed down, uh, uh, it, uh, slowed down and it sped back up again. And what sped it back up again? It can't be itself. It can't be any other phenomena speeding it back in, giving it a jump start back again. That means that glass is not, I mean, excuse me, that light is not uh, a thing. It's not a phenomena. It's certainly not atomistic. It's certainly not a particle. Nothing in and of its own volition can slow down and speed back up again without expelling extra energy. And light certainly does not do that. It cannot do that. I mean, nobody has even postulated such a hilarious absurdity. So light is a field perturbation. It's not a particle. That's why the smartest minds who ever lived that gave us 100% of the electrical grid, that's why I am agreeing with them. This is not tinfoil hat crap. There's no such thing as a photon particle. It's never been observed. It's never been the output of any experiment ever. The whole notion of a light particle is uh, based on uh, the seeming wave particle duality of light. But if you understand what light is, which is a coaxial circuit, you would understand that Mother Nature is not a crazy hooker on crack, and that light is a coaxial circuit. Most people don't know what the hell a coax cable is. They don't even know what a circuit is. Anything that is transverse is only transverse to a noumena, which is not transverse. Because anything that is transverse is a force vector. Transverse electrical magnetic? 
So anything that's transverse is transverse to a plane of inertia, in this case a longitudinal plane of inertia, which are compressions and rarefactions of dielectric longitudinal pulses, which is light. Now those pulse compressions are what the common idiot, meaning humanity, calls the photon. You know, obviously after a long day of shooting, you don't have to take your lens off and dump those photons out of your camera, do you? If you think that there are photons passing through your lens and hitting the back of your sensor, then what you have done is you've been brainwashed by stupid asses. You have been taught BS twaddle nonsense, unicorn farts, and leprechaun dust. Okay? <laughs> Most people don't care about this, and it certainly doesn't help you make a better photograph. It's interesting knowing about light, though. When you actually understand light, as I explained in the prior video, there's a neat little secret about the X-Trans sensor that lets you actually create higher element count lenses and yet still have really, really color-saturated pictures because glass attenuates blue and green in spectrum light more. If you have the fact in your brain, which is quantifiable and measurable, that a lens, whether it's high element count or low element count, good design or bad design, attenuates excessively blue and green light, then what that means resultantly, if you are a smart person, which few people are these days, is that the sensor should have more green, uh, now green sits at the magic point, you don't have to have as many blue, but you definitely should have more green, and that's exactly what's on the X-Trans sensor. Now this is only a 9x9 nine nine block, and there's only two more green, but when you, when you get into the multiplicative, and this is a larger view, and just still a stupid micro, micro spot, you see all that green there? Yeah, that is why the Fuji files are so color rich, they're so color saturated. This is what lets Fuji get away with designing high element count, not extremely high, but high element count lenses and still have people say, oh my god, you know, the Fuji seems to contradict all your theories of, uh, of high element count lenses. And the answer to that is no, it doesn't. What it does mean is that you have to design a sensor with more attenuated spectrum due to the glass receptors on the sensor, which this has. And in multiplicative over a DX crop sensor, that sensor is really, really green. <laughs> That's why those pictures are so color rich. That's why the blues and the greens don't look washed out and faded out like they do on a bear sensor. You stick a high element count uh, lens on a bear sensor, which is on the left here, it's like, ooh, the blues and the greens are a little washed out. Yeah, there's a reason for that. It's because with any 3x3 block on the X-Trans sensor, within any 3x3 block, doesn't matter where you measure it at, which I've got them marked here, you've always got five green receptors. But you don't need that many red receptors because the silicon absorption rate of red light is high. The transmissive rate of red light through glass is high. Its capacitance is low, which means as red light passes through glass, it just tiptoes right through it. When high energetic, high capacitance blue light passes through glass, one element and another and another and another and another and another, and another, and another it gets attenuated. What's attenuated mean? Let's just say washed out in layman's terms. Yeah, attenuated, you know. That's a term for uh, ham radio operators like me. Your camera is a radio. Electromagnetism is electromagnetism, girlfriend. Your lens is no different than antenna. When I used to go to the ham radio conventions, people would shop around for the best antenna, and it's no different than a photographer shopping for the best lens. It's like, what's the best antenna for my camera? You know? And trust me, there are a lot of antenna designs. People have no idea. If you're not into ham radio and in shortwave uh, and uh, field theory and electrical theory, especially antenna theory, antenna theory is so complex and so deep. There are more antenna designs than you can imagine. There are discone antennas, there are dipole antennas, or yagi antennas. Holy shit! The different styles and geometries and shapes and whatnot of antennas will blow your damn mind. It's almost exactly the same thing for lenses. You know why? 
because every lens that is full of glass is an electromagnetic antenna, not for shortwave, not for AM, not for FM, but is an antenna for visible light. Irrefutable, hard, fast. Don't even try to argue with me about it because you can't. Gee, electromagnetism is electrum. Yeah, well, we got X-rays, gamma rays, uh, radar, down here, shortwave, AM, FM, TV. You know, your cell phone up in the uh, 2, 3 gigahertz range, sometimes 800 megahertz range. Electromagnetism is electromagnetism is electromagnetism. <laughs> your lens is nothing other than an antenna for visible light. Oh, damn! That's exactly right. Has anybody in the photography world ever talked about this fact? Nobody but me. It's absolutely irrefutable and it's absolutely undeniable. 110% undeniable. Oh, I never looked at it that way. You wouldn't believe the antenna designs out there. I've made a lot of my own unique antennas. Do you know a neat little thing that they stick in the back of cell phones now? They have a neat little thing called a fractal antenna. You know what's magical about a fractal antenna? Is that it has trans-spectrum receptivity. There is some lens design on the future that's going to mimic what we already have in a shortwave, uh, UHF, VHF, and... Uh, um, and ten fractal antennas in, uh, in uh, cell phones and other receivers. And actually, getting kind of close to that are some of the ultra zooms. They're basically like fractal antennas because you know you're able to go from 18 millimeters to uh, 300 millimeters. Um, but there's some other interesting stuff that getting into would take a long time to discuss as so far as uh, the nature of frequency capacitance, resistance of far in spectrum, near in spectrum light that we could. Uh, uh, I don't think we could. I know there will be um, special lenses that will let you attenuate certain frequencies and let it perform in different ways because uh, everything is electrical. Everything is electrical, okay? Everything is electrical.